Hello and welcome back to another video. Welcome back to the YouTube channel. Make sure to leave a like on the video and subscribe if you are new. Uh, the social media is at GVR Mics is on all platforms at TikTok, Twitter and Instagram if you want to follow me. And we're trying to hit 1k as soon as possible people. But thank you for the support as of recently as always. It doesn't go unnoticed. And we're, we're going to have videos, match previews, Watch alongs flying at you on the channel, especially today with Sporting versus Arsenal. But also speaking of Arsenal, West Ham Arsenal is coming up, so it's going to be quite a lot of videos on, um, on the channel talking about it, of course. Um, but yeah, we're going to talk about what we learned from Newcastle Little West Ham United too. Uh, we won a game. We won a game. That's just a relief in itself, uh, to be completely honest with you. But I think it's the main issue we've all been talking about, and that everyone's very unanimous on is coaching is coaching and tactics and that's obviously important in any team and any structure that any football club likes to you know play in the premier league it's very important very important in any individual 90 minute game however with this one it was a complete change from what we've been seeing is actually what we were expecting to see from at the start of the season more possession based football um now, at first, I was thinking, I do think that we won the game more because Newcastle were bad rather than us being decent. But when you look back here, it was just a bit of both. It's like every normal win, a normal loss for another team, etc. To be honest with you, as I said, Newcastle's game plan was just putting a ball in behind, etc. Um, and I think it was very easy for Emerson, Wambisaka, Kilman, and Tadebo to all read. Um, and very structured, the back four was, despite... All of them started a bit shaky, but all of them grew into the game, in my opinion, and you can't really complain about their performance overall. Um, don't get me wrong, everyone sort of made a couple mistakes each, but nothing major for you to be like, okay, this is a big problem within the game. I thought, like, everyone kind of did that. Everyone improved as the game went on, to be honest with you. And this and this year, and if Lopetegui wants to succeed, he just needs to let the team play with freedom. The reason why... It ain't as simple as that, though, is because this manager likes to change it pretty much every game on and off the ball, the way we're structured on the ball, and the way we're structured off the ball. So that's why we haven't been succeeding. That's why we've been completely inconsistent. That's why we haven't been able to win two games in a row after we beat either Crystal Palace away, Manchester United at home, and Ipswich at home. This is our fourth win of the season, I'm pretty sure. And this is our uh, second away win, obviously. And going into what is it, 12, 13 games, wherever it is, it, that's not a good look. That's not a good look at all. Now, yes, after Arsenal, it does get a bit easier in a sense that we're not facing the teams that are necessarily battling for Europe. However, Brighton are on form and are the team that are, team that are, are our bogey team. We've still got Liverpool at home. We're not going to win that game, let's be real. And uh, we've got Bournemouth as well. Bournemouth is a team we always usually struggle with. I know we've got a couple of results over them as of recent in the recent years as well under Parker, not Parker, Gary O'Neill and Iriola, but still, it's never easy. It's never easy um, facing ball. We've never beaten Iriola in the league. We've only drawn with them twice and uh, lost, a, in, I mean, won in a cup game. But at the same time, people, in this game specifically, here were the changes. The changes were we actually were brave and playing out from the back. We actually saw pretty much this, this a similar way to playing with how we did against Manchester City with a different lineup. With Manchester City, Lopetegui got the lineup spot on in that game, where he played Rodriguez and Alvarez together, dropped Suchek and put Paketar, Kudus, Bowen and Antonio as the front four. And it more came down to the fact that City were clinical and we weren't. We didn't finish our chances. Uh, we hit the post a couple of times, but we did create quite a bit. We just needed to finish our chances. You couldn't really blame the manager necessarily for that. And uh, the first and third goal were individual errors. Um, with this game, there were no individual errors, even though sometimes we didn't always keep the ball. Uh, we kept the ball way better than we have in any other game that we've played this season, probably, apart from the Man City game. There's actually not that much space when you play Newcastle. However, they sometimes they like to try and suffocate you with the press. I believe that, despite the fact that Suchek isn't a technical player, he wasn't even getting involved in the build-up, which was better for us. He was only getting involved when he had to. Soler and Packets are dropping deep. We actually had technicians in the midfield at their best. Obviously, Paquetar doesn't really play well with Alvarez. He doesn't play well with Alvarez, whether he's ahead of him in the 10 or playing alongside him, which we haven't really seen as much, to be fair. So we can't really judge that specifically. But with Suchek being the goal threat, the aerial threat, uh, he can go forward and threaten like when we're on the ball and off the ball. He did tremendously 
defensively, as he always does when it comes to defensive work. Um, Soler and Paquetar, Soler actually played in this right position, dictate and play from deep. Uh, and then sometimes arriving in the box, Leia arrives into the box and anything he really needs to work on is the final third pass and the shooting. Uh, I do like him as a player from the glimpses that I've seen of him. Um, I would like him to get a run of games and especially when we've got this tough schedule coming up as we play one game a week anyway, we can still uh, refresh the squad quite a bit in terms of like the lineups that we can put out. We can still switch it here and there. He needs to go with this exact same lineup against Arsenal. Don't go too restricted just because Arsenal play Rodriguez. Nothing against Rodriguez. In fact, I've got nothing against him. But if you drop Soler for Rodriguez, you fucked it for yourselves. Or, or you drop Somerville and you put Rodriguez in and then put Soler on the left. It doesn't work. It doesn't work. So don't do that. Um, it was nice to see the best of, almost almost the best of Jared Bowen and Somerville. Two wingers cutting in on their, on their stronger foot, running at them with pace. Antonio Bully and Lloyd Kelly. Lloyd Kelly didn't want it all game. Didn't want it all game. After the first five minutes, Antonio really settled in and showed his true self in terms of the vintage Antonio. You know, the Antonio we have in lockdown and even the first half of the season after that. The that kind of striker Antonio likes to bully players, but obviously we don't. Ex I don't expect him to be the same Antonio because the guy's thirty-four. So I don't think it's fair to pin all the pressure on him. But this is what I was talking about in terms of this is the Antonio I know. Um, well, just in general, just brave and played out from the back because usually when we get the ball into the first phase of midfield or in a defense, we usually knock it long. We did knock it long at times, and we do need to be better in terms of players going to receive for the ball, going to receive the ball, etc. Um, and getting a bit more fluid. But we did improve that in the second half. I, I believed in the first half we weren't doing that as much. In the second half, we really showed that we can do that. Like Wan Bissaka, comfortable, Paqueta, Emerson, Kilman, Zadibo, Soler, even Suchek at times, even Antonio at times, Bowen on the right hand side. There's not really much to complain about, to be honest with you, in terms of that game. One thing I will say, the ball over the top thing happened a lot when Newcastle was trying to get back into the game. They didn't really test Fabianski, and Fabianski did really well on the ball. It was very rare to see. Um but what what my thing is that for example, you can't do that whole high line thing if you're not going to offside trap it properly. I feel like with Arsenal, for example, when we come up against, when we come up against them, we can't afford to play the same way as we did just then because you got Erdogan threading the ball into Bukayo Saka, etc. So you kind of got all that going on at the same time. Uh, so if we come up against an Arsenal team that's got Saka running in behind against Emerson and Kilman, who are good at reading the game but not the fastest, Saka's not necessarily lightning quick, but they can be really affected 1v1 by Saka because he's one of the better wingers in the league, of course. Uh, assuming it'll be Gabriel Hetsu starting like it was against Nottingham Forest for them, they've got a big job in their hands no matter what you guys think of Gabriel Hetsu because as much as he's not a finisher, he's good with his feet. So it'll make it will make it more fluid. He'll draw defenders in then people will run him behind in the spaces after that. That's what the defence kind of got to work on. Um, it was nice and compact, the midfield, but it was still kind of the same complaint as what I was saying off the ball for time is the midfield and defence is the midfield and attack is in a low block and the defensive line's in a high line. So everyone's congested in the same space, basically. That's my thing with it. But hopefully we can improve that. But th those are the changes tactically, and that's kind of what we learned uh, from the game. So make sure to like the video, make sure to subscribe if you want to. Social media is in the description if you want to follow me, the email for the inquiries. I'm on Capital Conflict on Carefree Lewis's channel at 5 p.m. You've probably already seen already seen the stream by the time you watch this video, but big up to that if you haven't just watched it on the playback. And also we've got the stream for Sporting Arsenal at 745. So yeah. Make sure to like the video, make sure to subscribe if you're new at GVO Mike's on Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok. And I'll see you guys later.